I would like to introduce Christopher Crook for the face introduction. Christopher. Good morning, everyone. I hope it's still morning for everyone. Um, unless you're uh, outside the United States, then good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Crook. I'm the uh, um, FACE TV, TWG Chair, and I'm just going to do a, a quick FACE overview um, just to highlight uh, things about the FACE technical standard, uh, the overall FACE approach, and, you know, just a little bit about what the FACE technical standard defines. So uh, the overall FACE approach was to develop a technical standard for a software common operating environment designed to promote portability and create software product lines across the military av aviation domain. Um, the FACE approach uh, um, outlines a uh, software approach that is at the modular level, so it focuses on the software module at, at, the, at the lowest level. The aspects of the FACE approach are it uh, defines business processes to adjust procurement and incentivize industry. It uh, involves technical practices to promote the development of reusable software components. Um, and a software standard to promote the development of portable components between differing avionics architectures. So a little bit about the FACE technical standard, uh, what it provides, uh, first and foremost, a software approach designed to tackle barriers to modularity, portability, and interoperability. It also defines a reference architecture that uh, uses standardized interfaces and uh, provides requirements as well as uh, guidance for developing software components that will reside in different architectural segments based on the capability or service that the software uh, component provides. It defines a phase data architecture for describing the uh, data that traverses uh, the different interfaces within the phase reference architecture, as well as the semantics that uh, define that data. The FACE technical standard uh, provides the IDL definitions for all the FACE interfaces that are defined in the standard. Uh, it also provides programming languages from IDL to the C, C++, ADA, and Java languages. Uh, the FACE technical standard also defines a set of OS profiles based on uh, different levels of criticality, uh, depending on the avionics uh, um, domain that is, it is designed for. Uh, those are general purpose. Uh, safety and security. Um, one thing to mention that um, um, whereas uh, airworthiness is a uh, concern for the FACE technical standard and there are guidance for meeting airworthiness requirements, uh, just um, implementing the FACE technical standard does not guarantee um, uh, air, airworthiness certification. That is still very much up to the software design and the FACE technical standard uh, does not involve a coding standard for uh, software design. So moving along, so this is a view of the uh, face architectural segments. The face architectural segments do um, uh, form together to create the foundation of the face reference architecture. Um, if you look at this from a kind of a top-down uh, view, at the very top you have what's called the portable components segment. Uh, software components that are going to reside here are ones that are considered uh, uh, the most portable. Um, however, you know, in, in the face techno standard, uh, portability is not always guaranteed, but software components that are considered to be the um, uh, most portable are going to be in this segment. Um, examples that will be here are things that uh, rely nothing on nothing more than uh, using the operating system um, uh, level calls for POSIX and A-Ring and moving data around. Um, Going a step down, uh, the transport services segment, uh, software components that are going to be encapsulated within this segment are ones that provide uh, data movement and um, uh, routing of data and um, association of data. So anything having to do with actually like, you know, moving data or manipulating it, all those software comp capabilities are going to be encapsulated within this segment. Uh, one step further down, you have the platform-specific services segment. Here's where you get into your software components that are more ICD-specific and provide um, either a common service that is going to be uh, portable across different um, aviation platforms or uh, a graphic service or something that uh, requires uh, data from an external source. How it gets uh, data from an external source is going to be in the next segment, which is the I.O. services segment. Software components here are going to uh, provide um, the capability to either um, 
uh, get data from or move data to uh, a certain bus, um, device driver, or external piece of hardware. So this is uh, how you get data in and out of your uh, face reference architecture. Um, operating system service segment is the final uh, segment. This uh, is, it doesn't provide an operating system, but mainly, uh, mainly provides the foundation work for how the face reference architecture um, accesses uh, capabilities that were provided via the operating system. Uh, this is achieved via APIs. Uh, most notably, the two APIs that are provided by a face OSS are POSIX and A-Ring 653. Um, also here, you're going to have your um, uh, programming language uh, runtimes that are provided by a specific operating system, like a C++ uh, programming language runtime. Um, the face technical standard does um, involve requirements for what features of the programming language runtimes run um, um, must be uh, provided. And I'm getting a message from Sally. Um, Just ignore that, keep going. Okay, um, okay, will do. Um, so basically, um, how you um, interface the um, operating system itself is going to be, be done via the operating system segment. Um, any device drivers, um, uh, partitioning, time and space partitioning is going to be handled by the software components that are uh, provided by the OSS. Now, each of the segments is separated by a defined face interface, and all these face interfaces are defined within the technical standard and are provided in IDL format. Um, the fir first uh, interface is uh, between the portable component segment and the platform-specific services segment and how they um, move data um, to and from the transport service segment, and that is the transport services interface. This is a typed interface, which is uh, uh, message and, uh, or, or rather data type specific, um, and it allows uh, the uh, PCS and PSSS components uh, to send messages among each other, and uh, it can either be blocking, non-blocking, pub, sub, it all, it all really depends on uh, the capabilities provided by the components within the TSS. Um, there is an IO services interface. Um, in uh, the most recent version of the technical standard, that IO service interface is going to be bus specific, um, pertaining to um, a variety of different buses, whether it be I2C2, um, uh, it, it provides a generic bus, a serial bus. Those are just some examples. Uh, once again, the um, uh, IO services segment uh, software components are going to be uh, bus or device specific uh, to provide connection to a certain bus or device. And then the OSS interface. This provides the standardized means to use the services that are um, encapsulated within the um, OSS, which provides you kind of a gateway to the operating system. Um, the, AP, the APIs that you're going to be allowed to use are a, um, the subset of the POSIX and ARA 653 APIs dependent on the OS profile that you are using. Uh, security being the most uh, restrictive in terms of um, um, API uh, calls that your software can, um, component can make. Safety being, you know, more aligned to um, uh, safety critical applications and being a little bit less restrictive, and then general purpose being the least restrictive uh, when it terms when it, in, in terms of the APIs that you are allowed to use. Uh, just some terms for face software. Um, um, these are specific to face. Um, face doesn't like to use the term software component uh, because uh, when it comes to designing software for FACE. If you, def if you have created a um, piece of software that meets the requirements for a specific segment, you have created what we call a unit of conformance. A uh, FACE unit of conformance can be referred to that at any point during its life cycle from uh, design all the way up to conformance. However, it is not considered a conformant unit, unit of conformance until it has gone through the FACE conformance program, which is the um, face verification, face certification, and um, inputting its metadata into the face registry. Um, units of conformance that communicate with the TSS using the TS interface, as I showed in a previous slide, have to provide what is called a unit of portability supplied model. 
um, according to the phase state architecture. This is a data model that defines uh, units of conformance, but it doesn't provide uh, design um, uh, constraints within the model. It merely um, shows the TSS connections as well as uh, defines and maps data messages that will um, traverse between that unit of conformance and the TSS. Um, it has um, details about the connection in it, uh, connection names, what type of connection um, uh, it is meant to uh, provide, and things like that. So um, you may hear unit of portability tossed around. Unit of portability should only be uh, used in reference to a UOP supplied model. And then um, um, a final term that we use is the face computing environment. The face computing environment is what we consider the environment that you have that allows the integration of, of face uh, units of conformance. Uh, what I mean by that is you have all the infrastructure needed to perform that integration. You have all the services and APIs there ready. Um, so if you have a face ESS, a face OSS, a face IOSS, um, as well as any common services that are required, you have a face uh, computing environment, which is considered uh, an implementation of the face reference architecture. Uh, just in summary, uh, the FACE technical standard defines a reference architecture designed to eliminate barriers of portability and encourage the development of reusable software. It defines FACE segments which abstract functionality to promote portability, and it defines a set of best practices for creating FACE software components. Thank you, Chris. There is one question that we'll ask quickly. If it's a long answer, I'm going to have to ask you to do it via email. Um, okay. the, quest, the question is, is there any effort to harmonize some components slash interfaces face with requirements from other domain services? Uh, there are always ongoing efforts to um, um, kind of harmonize face with other software standards. Um, we uh, look at that all the time because we want for FACE to be inter interoperable with other standards. Um, as far as domain services or existing products, um, not so much. Uh, FACE uh, tries to be um, as open as possible without uh, aligning to existing products, but rather existing open standards. Uh, does that uh, answer your question? Um, if, yes. if not, I can email and uh, provide more clarification. Thank you, yes. 